Hello everyone. Today we will discuss operations related to stomach and its complication. First operation is vagotomy. There are of three types: truncal vagotomy, selective vagotomy, and highly selective vagotomy. Regarding truncal vagotomy, bilateral truncal vagotomy and drainage was first introduced by Daxter the year 1943. So it was the treatment of choice for duodenal ulceration. Here the main trunk of the anterior and the posterior vagus are transected. As the vagal nerve or vagus nerve is the secret motor to the stomach, the transaction of the vagal nerve leads to decrease gastric acid secretion and as the vagus nerves are conductor of motor impulse to the stomach, denervation of the anteropyloroduodenal segment results in gastric stasis in patient on whom tranquil vagotomy alone is performed. So in order to overcome this gastric stasis, a drainage procedure is to be added. So this is the anterior vagal trunk and the gastroesophageal ligament is uh, incised. The anterior trunk is um, isolated and is divided. Similarly, the posterior vagal trunk is isolated and divided and this is to be followed by some drainage procedure. So the most popular drainage procedure was hand chemicalist uh, pyloplasty. It is simple to perform and involve the longitudinal section of the pyloric ring. The incision is uh, closed transversely. Next is the gastrojejunostomy. So it's an alternative uh, drainage procedure to pyloplasty. This is performed by opening the lesser sac and performing an anastomosis between the most dependent part of the antrum and the first jejunal loop. So an isoperistaltic anastomosis uh, is commonly performed. The operation of truncal vagotomy and drainage was subsequently or substantially safer than gastrectomy. Regarding selective vagotomy, it is not commonly performed. Posteriorly derived vagal branches, which innervates the small intestine and pancreas, and anteriorly derived vagal branches, which supplies to the gast gallbladder and liver, are not divided. The preservation of anteriorly derived vagal branch can avoid alterations in gallbladder motility that might lead to stasis and bone formation later on. Selective vagotomy involves interruption of both nerves of bladder chain and therefore does not avoid the need of a drainage procedure. So thus the main indication of selective vagotomy are patients undergoing selective antrectomy with vagotomy for refractory ulcer symptoms or obstruction. So exposure of the vagus, gastroesophageal junction and the esophagus is obtained in the same way that the surgeon would perform truncal vagotomy. Anteriorly, the nerve of latter jet is uh, identified by following the anterior vagal trunk as it descends from the esophagus to the lesser curvature of the stomach. Frequently, the descending branch of the left gastric artery is seen lying in close proximity to the site where the hepatic or the gallbladder branch takes off toward the liver in the gastrohepatic omentum. 
So this is the place where we will locate the nerve. So here in this picture we can see the descending branch of the left gastric uh, artery is uh, transected, divided and uh, the anterior gastric branch of the anterior, anterior vagus are transected in the dotted line shown in the diagram. Next we have highly selective vagotomy. So highly selective vagotomy is presently the operation of choice for duodenal ulcer. So the procedure involves uh, selective division of the nerve to the stomach, thus preserving the nerves of lateral jet. So the nerve of lateral jet are the terminal branches of the vagus, which innervates the pylorus. So nerve of lateral jet is spared and rest are the preservation of these uh, terminal branches prevents gastric stasis and therefore no drainage procedure is required. Only the parietal cell mass of the stomach is denervated in highly selective vagotomy. So the mobilization of the distal part of the gastrocolic omentum is done and it is carried out outside the gastroepiploic arcade in order to avoid the loss of any blood supply to the greater curvature. So this dissection should be carried outside the gastroepiploic arcade so in order to avoid loss of blood supply. So sufficient mobilization of the stomach is uh, carried out in order to rotate the stomach upward and to the patient to the right. The posterior nerve of lateral jet can be seen running close to the descending branch of the left uh, uh, gastric artery. Vagal fibers can be seen running transversely toward the lesser curvature. So an important landmark here is the incisura angularis, it is somewhere here. The crow foot, so these are the crow foot, is the neurovascular bundle that innovates the junction of the body and the antrum and has three characteristic branches from which its name is derived. So these nerves contain motor branches to the antrum and secretory branches to the authentic mucosa. The selective division of the nerve of the stomach is done preserving the nerve of lateral jet in highly selective vagotomy. Next is the drainage procedure. So drainage procedure includes uh, pyloric dilatation, gastroenterostomy, pyloromyotomy, and pyloroplasty. So uh, pyloric dilatation can be done by open approach or via endoscopy or balloon dilatation. So generally, these techniques are uh, used when truncal vagotomy or selective vagotomy is performed, but they also may be used with a highly selective vagotomy in order to treat obstruction resulting from peptic acid scarring. So normally we don't need a drainage procedure with a highly selective vagotomy. But when highly selective vagotomy is performed in a cicatrized duodenum following a, a peptic ulceration, in those cases only we uh, mix the highly selective vagotomy with some drainage procedure. Otherwise, when the pylorus or pyloric canal is um, intact or is functioning in that circumstances, drainage procedure is not required with highly selective vagotomy as the nerve of lateral jet is preserved in highly selective vagotomy. So pyloromyotomy, it's done in uh, pyloric uh, stenosis in infant. The incision is made to score the anterior surface of the stomach uh, from 1 cm to 2 cm proximal to 1 cm distal to the pyloric ring. So the separation of the pyloric muscle is uh, done mainly with the fine tip hemostase and uh, the potency 
is uh, maintained. Next, we have the pyloroplasty. So, commonly performed procedure is Hanke Mikuli's uh, procedure. So, uh, incision is uh, made over the pyloric uh, canal, as we can see here. And uh, after opening this canal, so it is closed in a uh, vertical manner. This is the closure, final closure being done. So next type is the finis u shaped pyroplasty. So these two parts, this is the stomach and this is the duodenum, are opposed together. So this is the first layer, posterior layer is taken and the incision is uh, made over the stomach, pyloric uh, canal and the duodenum and it is anastomosis is done between these two parts. Here you can see this is the posterior layer, this is the inner layer. Again, this one is closed and this is to be followed by the uh, seromuscular layer. So next is the gastrectomy. The common indication for gastric resection includes peptic ulcer disease and uh, tumor of the stomach. So, peptic ulceration nowadays uh, the incidence is very low with the advent of uh, modern medicine like PPI. And therefore, the uh, gastrectomy is mainly reserved for the tumors of the stomach. So, um, these are the terminologies we have uh, anthrectomy, we have uh, hemigastrectomy. We have partial uh, gastrectomy, we have uh, uh, subtotal uh, gastrectomy. So, um, uh, anthrectomy, when we'll say anthrectomy, when one third of the stomach is dissected. So, hemigastrectomy, when one half of the uh, uh, stomach is dissected. Partial gastrectomy, two third of the stomach is dissected. And uh, subtotal gastrectomy, when uh, three fourth stomach is uh, dissected. We have uh, these uh, options like build root 1 gastrectomy, build root 2 gastrectomy and total gastrectomy. So these are the initial steps. So mobilization of the stomach is done. So this is the mm, gastrocolic or metabolism transacted and uh, it's followed by the transaction of the hepat hepatoduodenal or hepatogastric uh, ligament. So, thus the mobilization of this uh, part of stomach is uh, uh, performed. Coming to Billroad 1 gastrectomy, so after mobilization, the distal stomach is uh, transected and uh, end to end anastomosis that is between the stomach and the duodenum is done. So, this is Billroad 1 gastrectomy. So this is performed for type 1 gastric ulcer or duodenal or the pyloric channel ulcer with minimal scarring of the duodenal bulb and the pylorus. So Cocker uh, maneuver should be performed prior to distal uh, gastrectomy to minimize tension of the anastomosis. So by Cocker maneuver or Cockerization we mean the um, uh, mobilization of the uh, duodenum. A uh, distal portion of the stomach is uh, resected and the remaining stomach is anastomosed end to end with the duodenum as I have said. So this is Billroth 1 gastrectomy. So here this is the areas to be resected. So transaction is done after mobilization and this part is uh, uh, transected again and uh, this part and the duodenum is the further anastomosis. So either we can use stapler or we can use the Hanson technique and uh, gastro duodenostomy is uh, performed. So there is the anastomosis, end to end anastomosis created between the stomach and the duodenum. So this is Bill wrote one gastrectomy. Coming to Billroth 2 gastrectomy, here 
when scarring or undue tension precludes Billroth one anastomosis following distal gastrectomy or Billroth two gastrogegostomy is indicated. Suppose uh, uh, following this section we cannot perform the gastro anastomosis then in such condition so this is the alternative that is below to gastrectomy so here instead of uh, the anastomosis between the stomach and the duodenum here the anastomosis is made between the stomach and a jejunal loop so this is below to gastrectomy so following uh, gastric section the duodenal stump is closed so this is the duodenal stump is being closed and the remaining stomach is anastomosis and to side with the jejunum so here we can see the anastomosis between the stomach and the jejunum so similarly here the uh, transaction of the stomach is done and here we can see the stomach is the anastomosis with the jejunal loop so ultimately this is the picture so when we take the loop anterior to the colon, transverse colon, this type of uh, anastomosis is known as anti-colic gastrogenostomy. And when it is uh, carried out behind the colon, so a rent is created in the mesentery and the loop, uh, the general loop is uh, carried out through that mesentery anastomosis that in that case it is known as retro polyp gastrogenostomy. Next we have total gastrectomy. So here entire stomach is removed. So entire stomach is removed, it's not uh, available here. So duodenal stump is closed and the jejunal loop is advanced further for anastomosis. So this is the operation total of total gastrectomy. So it is mainly for the uh, tumor of the body. So suppose this is the involvement here. So entire stomach will be uh, transected along with the greater momentum nodes and all. So after mobilization, the duodenum is uh, transected. Momentum is uh, mobilized. Uh, lymph node dissection is being carried out and here it is transected in the proximal uh, area in the distal esophagus and further anastomosis is the rue and y anastomosis is done so ultimately the specimen is uh, re resected it's removed so jejunum is transected here and uh, the distal jejunum which will form the rule loop will be advanced further and it will be anastomosed with the esophagus. So this is the rule limb 40 centimeter rule limb which is advanced further up and it's anastomosed here with the esophagus and the jejunal jejunal enterocyte anastomosis is uh, done. So uh, thereby the chances of uh, biliary reflex gets reduced. So bile will uh, come through this limb and the food matter will come through this limb and it will get mixed here and uh, it will go down further. So this finishes the uh, steps of total gastrectomy. So see this is the anastomosis is being performed, ultimately this is the picture. So this is the DJ flexure. So this is the proximal uh, jejunum. This is the uh, distal jejunum, it's further advanced upward. And then anastomosis is done between the esophagus and the jejunum. And this is the ruling. So regarding complications after gastric operation, so it's divided into complications following any operation. They can be pulmonary complication, they can be cardiac complication, and they can be thrombotic complication. So unlike any other operation, so um, these complications can follow. 
following aspect uh, surgery. Besides these, there can be specific complication which is uh, divided into early complication and late complication. So early complications includes hemorrhage from an osteomotic line, paralytic ilia, thromal obstruction, duodenal uh, stump leakage or fistula, any leakage or postoperative pancreatitis. Regarding late complication, it can be a recurrent ulceration, gastrojejunocolic uh, fistula, post gastrectomy or dumping syndrome, post vagotomy diarrhea, intestinal obstruction, pulmonary tuberculosis, anemia, a decalcifying bone disease, carcinoma in the remnant of the stomach, and gallstone. So coming to hemorrhage, the frequent complications of uh, gastrostomy are bleeding, peritoneal leakage, and persistent gastrocutaneous fistula. So hemorrhage may occur due to failure to control bleeding, either from the ulcer or from the gastric uh, suture line. So if it occurs, Sedation with slow blood transfusion and careful follow up is advised. If the bleeding is severe and persistent, the abdomen is uh, explored, the source of bleeding is identified, and subsequently it is tackled. Next complication is paralytic ileus. So, some degree of uh, ileus, either local or general, may follow any surgery. So the intestine fails to transmit peristaltic weight and this leads to uh, collection of uh, fluid and gas in the intestine ultimately resulting in distension, vomiting, absence or high uh, bowel sound and failure to pass the platters. So ileus is uh, prolonged in uh, hypoproteinemia, latent renal failure, or if gastrointestinal suction is continued for long after surgery. So these are the uh, causes where we may find uh, paralytic ileus. So it is uh, treated uh, by IV fluids and uh, nasogastric uh, aspiration and suction and uh, electrolyte should be corrected. Next uh, complication is stromal obstruction. So stromal obstruction occurs due to edema of the actual stoma or of adjacent small bowel or it occurs due to um, occurrence of retrograde jejunogastric interception or it occurs due to ball valve obstruction of duodenum by hypertrophied and edematous mucosa of the antrum in below to one anastomosis or due to um, some technical factor or due to atonic stoma. So this is suspected when there is postoperative gastric distension with the increased return of uh, gastric secretion to the nasogastric tube. So below to one presents with stromal uh, obstruction due to improper surgical technique or in a patient with advanced duodenal pathology. Below 2 causes stromal obstruction due to inflammatory adhesions involving the afferent loop just below the gastrojejunostomy. So regarding the acute afferent loop obstruction, it is seen with the below 2 operation and is due to the obstruction of the afferent loop due to uh, twist or volvulus or jejunogastric uh, intersusception or a kink at a uh, gastrojejunostomy site. Next complication is duodenal blowout. So duodenal blowout is the infrequent but very serious complication of build to gastrectomy. Maximum uh, incidence is noted in the fourth post-op uh, day. So it is uh, 
usually uh, due to a uh, degree of disruption or obstruction of the uh, afferent loop. Other causes uh, are severe disease of the duodenal bulb and the excessive suture closure or faulty closure of the duodenal thumb. So care must be taken when performing uh, Rouen vianastomosis and there should not be any thinking of the afferent limb. So conservative management includes nasogastric aspiration, IV fluids, or total parental nutrition and antibiotics. So if the situation doesn't improve in 8 to 12 weeks, then surgical closure of the fistula should be done. Next complication is uh, recurrent ulceration. So this includes the true anastomotic ulcer or gastric ulcer in the remnant of the stomach. So true anastomotic ulcer can be gastrojejunal, gastroduodenal or jejunal ulcer. The symptoms appears within two years after operation and it consists of severe persistent pain a, which is boring in uh, nature and get worsened within a few minutes of taking food. The causes of recurrent uh, ulceration are incomplete brachotomy, inadequate gastric resection, retained uh, antral tissue after being rot to, G cell hyperplasia, gastrinoma, multiple endocrine neoplasia gas stasis, redundant afferent limb. So other causes of uh, pain abdomen is to be excluded first and the diagnosis should be confirmed by upper GI endoscopy. So conservative treatment uh, should be tried first and uh, the H2 blockers or PPIs are quite effective. When uh, medical therapy fails, surgical treatment should be initiated. So surgical treatment depends on the cause. The recurrent ulcer following simple gastrojejunostomy. So if this is the situation in that circumstances, anti-resection and truncal vagotomy is to be carried out. So if the situation is the recurrent ulceration following gastric resection and if 40 to 50% of the stomach is removed, in that case only vagotomy is sufficient. On the other hand, if uh, initial resection of the stomach is inadequate, then resection of the stomach to about 50% should be done and this is to be followed by vagotomy. Other the situation will be recurrent ulceration after antrectomy and vagotomy. So this is a rare situation and uh, usually it occurs due to incomplete vagotomy and uh, in such a case Jollinger ellison syndrome should be uh, excluded or should be ruled out. So if vagotomy is incomplete, so we have to complete the vagotomy, otherwise if it is not relieved with the medication, then total gastrectomy with the Ruan Y diversion is planned for such cases. So next the complication is gastrojejunopolic fistula. So it's a complication of uh, gastrojejunal ulcer. The ulcer penetrates and erodes the transosclone. Usually the symptom disappears soon after the fistula develops. But severe diarrhea with the each meal occurs. So this is diagnostic. So sudden onset of severe diarrhea in a patient who had a gastroenterostomy must always raise the possibility of this condition. So the treatment uh, consists of resection of the fistula with the repair of colon and jejunum together with vagotomy or uh, high partial gastrotomy. Next uh, important uh, complication is the post gastrectomy syndrome. We say it's a post table syndrome and this uh, can be early dumping or late dumping or early post tribal sy symptom or uh, late post tribal syndrome. 
or they can have uh, nutritional syndrome as well. So the stomach has an important role to play as an osmoregulator. It dilutes and mixes the indigested food thoroughly and allows only small amount of time to enter duodenum at one time. But any surgical procedure which bypasses the pylorus, it leads to entry of large amount of uh, hyper or smaller material into the jejunum causing dumping syndrome. So this influx of uh, uh, hyper or smaller material results in shift of a large amount of extracellular fluid into the jejunum. So this leads to sudden hyper glycemia and which is followed by severe hypoglycemia. So early dumping, the incidence is 10%. It's common and it's more severe type. It's commonly seen after below to gastrectomy. It is a primary disorder of carbohydrate metabolism and follows within 15 to 20 minutes of eating food. So, on eating food, an elevation in the level of various hormones are seen, which includes neurotensin, vasoactive intestinal peptide, pancreatic polypeptide, insulin, and glucagon. Simultaneously, the intestinal motility is altered with shift of extracellular fluid into the jejunum. So initial transient hyperglycemia occurs and it prevents further absorption of uh, glucose. This in turn draws fluid from the bowel wall by high osmolarity and thereby resulting in increased intestinal activity leading to diarrhea and fall in the blood volume. So abdominal and vasomotor symptoms appear immediately after taking food and they include sweating, sensation of warmth, tachycardia, palpitation, nausea, vomiting, weakness, borgborygmy and diarrhea. So these are the abdominal or the vasomotor symptoms that appear appears immediately on uh, taking food. So regarding treatment, first conservative management should be tried. So these conservative measures, they include small, frequent, low-carbohydrate meal, avoid food intake with food, or we can use uh, sandostatin, which is a long-acting somatostatin analog. It inhibits all the hormones which are elevated and uh, also reduce the intestinal uh, motility. And if these uh, conservative management fails, then uh, surgical management is to be carried out. So that includes conversion of Bilroad 2 to Bilroad 1 or interposition of a 10 cm antiperistaltic jejunal loop between stomach and the duodenum. So this operation reduces gastric emptying and thereby improves the symptoms of dumping syndrome. So this is the conversion of Bilroad 2 to Bilroad 1. So Bilroad 2 uh, we know that there is an anastomosis between the stomach and the loop of the jejunum. So this billroad 2 is to be converted into billroad 1. So in billroad 1, the stomach is uh, anastomosed with the duodenum. So this uh, segment is uh, detached and instead of that, this uh, portion is attached with the duodenum. So here you can see this is attached to the duodenum and these two are uh, anastomosed together. So this is the conversion of billroad 2 to billroad 1. Next uh, option is interposition of a 10 cm antiperistaltic jejunal loop. So this is the jejunal loop which is uh, turned to the opposite side. So it is not no more isoperistaltic. So this jejunal loop is uh, uh, placed in between the duodenum and the uh, stomach. 
So coming to late dumping syndrome, it's less severe and the incidence is 5%. This is a uh, uh, reactive uh, hypoglycemic phase, usually occurs two hours after meal. Due to initial uh, hyperglycemia, insulin secretion is stimulated which in turn leads to hypoglycemia. So clinical features uh, include the features of uh, hypoglycemia and they include tremor, fainting, and uh, uh, epigastric uh, emptying and nausea. So treatment is conservative by giving glucose if uh, needed and uh, food with reduced carbohydrate content and uh, increased protein content. So next, um, uh, complication is post vagotomy diarrhea so the exact cause is uh, not known it is uh, partly related to rapid uh, gastric emptying so the incidence uh, following tranquil vagotomy is 20 to 25 percent and uh, following highly selective vagotomy is uh, about one percent so proposed theory of uh, post vagotomy diarrhea are gastric stasis with uh, hypoacidity abnormal small intestinal motility, impaired uh, biliary and pancreatic function, intestinal mucosal changes, or increased uh, fecal excretion of uh, bile salts and uh, EC. So this leads to the uh, postvagotomy diarrhea. So it's a condition difficult to treat. So patient uh, should be managed with uh, dietary fortification with uh, food low in fluid content. Uh, restriction of the fluid intake with meals should be carried out. If possible, antidiarrheal preparations, codeine or cholestyramine are to be used. Surgery is indicated in patients who does not respond to the above measures. And the treatment uh, uh, option is interposition of the reverse loop of uh, the genome that is loop of around 10 centimeter long at the level of about 90 to 100 centimeter below the ligament of tree so that should be done and that may uh, lead to improvement of the uh, post vagotomy diarrhea so next complication is nutritional disturbances. So more resection, more will be the nutritional disturbances. So overall, we may get uh, uh, deficiencies uh, leading to megaloblastic anemia or iron deficiency anemia, calcium deficiency, uh, steatorrhea, diarrhea, vitamin D, D deficiency and subsequently uh, because of all these there will be weight loss. So any deficiency uh, should be identified uh, promptly and uh, uh, management should be done accordingly to correct the uh, nutritional deficiency. So next complications can be gallstone. So development of uh, um, gallstone is strongly associated with uh, tranquil vagotomy. So because of denervation of the stomach and the biliary tree stasis occurs and this leads to stone formation. So there can be leakage of the um, esophago uh, jejunostomy also so while uh, performing uh, total gastrectomy. So it should be um, uncommon in experienced hand. But when it occurs, it can be managed conservatively as the Roux and Y reconstruction means that uh, it is mainly the saliva and the ingested food that leads to this area. So some patients may establish a fistula from the wound or drain site and the other may need radiological or surgically placed drains. So it is a common practice to perform a water soluble contrast swallow 5 to 7 days after the operation to determine whether the anastomosis is intact or not. 
and it is uh, not uncommon to find a small radiological leak which subsequently uh, heals. Next, we can have a paraduodenal collection. So, this can be drained radiologically, uh, which will often convert the collection into an external fistula. There can be biliary peritonitis, and uh, this may require a laparotomy and uh, peritoneal toileting. And in these circumstances, uh, it is best to leave a follic catheter in the duodenum to establish a controlled duodenal uh, fistula. Thank you.